These are the five tight ends that are going to make or break fantasy football in 2024. This is the year that is most complicated to get right at the tight end position. We have the most new guys who are rising up. We still have Kelsey and Andrews. So let's break down the five guys that will hit or miss, destroy your league, win it. We'll see. First up on the list is Dalton Kincaid of the Buffalo Bills going at pick 60 on ESPN, 49 on sleeper, and 52 on underdog. He was number two overall in total slot snaps for tight ends, which means he's getting used in pretty good ways, but he wasn't getting used enough in the red zone. He only had nine targets in the red zone, which ranks 16th best in the league. On top of that, they really didn't use him downfield, even though he is pretty athletic. His average depth of target was six yards. That was 28th for tight ends. If he wants more upside as a tight end, he needs to run further down the field and be open more in the red zone. It's always tough when you have another good tight end on the team that's a better blocker and a better red zone threat like Dawson Knox. So when they do run one tight end sets in the red zone, it's very hard for Kincaid to even be on the field. This is very similar to how Kyle Pitts has been all throughout his career as a guy who can't really block. He gets subbed off in important situations. Studies have shown that most of fantasy points from tight ends come from in the red zone and play action plays. And a lot of this has to do with audibling. You could be out there on play action just to block, but when the quarterback calls an audible, you're generally the first guy open. Same thing in the red zone. So just being on the field is a very big deal. He played 16 games last year and 13 of them he played less than 70% of snaps which means there is room to improve. The good news for him is there's no more Stefan Diggs so we should get all the pass work this year but we don't know how much the Bills are going to pass compared to in years past. I expect them to be very run heavy and personally this year I'm not going to be in on Dawson Knox. I think his ADP is a little bit too high for me. The next tight end I just mentioned before it's going to be Kyle Pitts currently going at pick 75 on ESPN up at 57 on sleeper and 60 on underdog. He had a pathetic five red zone targets last last year that ranked 34th in the league amongst tight ends. Atlanta only had the 23rd most red zone scoring attempts per game. That should drastically improve in 2024. In 2023, the Falcons averaged 18.9 points per game. Vegas has them total expected points this year, 25.1 per game. This change of 6.3 points per game is the fourth largest out of any team in the league. With a head coaching change and Kirk Cousins at quarterback, they should be more efficient and play more up-tempo. Some good news, Pitts was first in air yards last year, but he was also first in unrealized air yards because his quarterbacks never actually hit him. A big Part of that was his cutting was not very good last year. His knee was pretty busted up from the injury he had the prior season. So I'll give him kind of the benefit of the doubt. I've never been a true fan of Kyle Pitts. I don't think he has the elite ceiling that a lot of people do think he has. But last year's statistics weren't really fair in him because he was playing hurt in a horrible situation. The one thing I did mention with Kincaid, though, is the snap share. He's played less than 75% of snaps in 15 of 17 games last year. We remember Jonu Smith had a bunch of big games. Michael Pruitt was also in for a lot of blocking snaps. And just for some comparison, George Kittle played over 75% of snaps in 16 out of 18 games, including the playoffs. The third tight end who is going to make or break fantasy football in 2024, it's Trey McBride going at pick 52 on ESPN, 43 on sleeper, and 47 on underdog. Wow, he is going high. But to be honest, it is kind of justified before Kyler Murray was playing last year, and they still had Zach Ertz as competition. He was averaging 6.9 fantasy points per game. When Kyler got back, after he came back in around week 10, he averaged 14.9 points per game. This would be the tight end one last season on average. He was number two in yards per route run and number five in target separation. Obviously, he's a very talented athlete and can get open. He only had 11 red zone targets last year, which was 11th in the league, and this makes sense. He had a lot of competition with Ertz, and the Cardinals were terrible. Arizona only averaged 2.5 red zone scoring attempts per game, which was 27th in the league. For context, when Kyler was healthy in his first three years, 2019, 2020, and 2021, the Cardinals were 14th, 12th, and 8th in this category. It's going to be a really big shift from last year, especially with the addition of Marvin Harrison. Arizona could be one of those good offenses. They have an implied team total from Vegas of 23.2 points per game this season, which is over four points more than in 2023. While Marvin Harrison is probably going to cap the raw upside of targets that Trey McBride can get, he should be more efficient in the red zone and this team overall should be better. I'm fine with drafting him, but personally, I can't stop drafting Mark Andrews over him, so I'm not going to have a lot of him. The fourth tight end we need to talk about is definitely going to break some fantasy leagues. It's Brock Bowers. He's currently down at pick 122 on ESPN, 77 on sleeper, and 95 on underdog. Clearly, nobody knows where they want to draft him. We just don't get this opportunity every single year. He's the most talented prospect of all time. Yes, better than Kyle Pitts. And we saw us drafting Kyle Pitts in the third and even late second round some of those years in Atlanta, and he was not worth it. Now, I'm not advocating for Brock Bowers going in the top five rounds or anything, but at pick 122 on ESPN, who are you going to draft there who has more upside than him? The rewards greatly outweigh the risks at that point. And the Raiders drafted him for a reason. They're going to have to use him well. They already had a good tight end, but they really went out of their way to grab him. He was the best player on the board, and they said, screw it, we're going to make a sick offense.
offense. He's pretty clearly the second best player on that offense already. Last year, Las Vegas averaged 19.5 points per game. They're implied to score 22.1 this year. Not an insane jump, but it's pretty good. If you guys remember how Jacoby Myers was sneaky good as a slot receiver last year, I think that's kind of going to be what Brock Powers is doing this year. A lot of slot stuff, but he's bigger and better and going to be used in the red zone more. And finally, the tight end who is really going to make or break fantasy because you have to pay a pretty penny for him. It is Sam Laporta going at pick 30 on ESPN, pick 21 on sleeper and 35 and underdog. There's no doubt about it. Sam Laporta was good last year, but he's getting overrated. He averaged the third most points per game. He just happened to finish as the tight end one because Hawkinson and Kelsey got hurt. But I would much rather have my tight end be that Trey McBride, that Kelsey, the Hawkinson, where they catch and run for a lot of yards and aren't as great in the red zone. Just because touchdowns are so unpredictable, these guys have a much higher floor than Laporta does. Laporta had nine games under 12 PPR points last year when Kelsey only had five. This just screams how much more important that receptions and pass catching work can be than just raw red zone numbers. And the simple reality is Laporta kind of broke any statistical model last year. He should negatively regress. He only had 16 red zone targets and scored 10 touchdowns. Kelsey had 21 and only scored five. We've seen in years past Kelsey scoring way over 10, but touchdowns are just that variant. I think he's going to bounce back big this year. And with only 16 targets, I think Laporta is probably going to score more like seven touchdowns. Not to mention he's going at the tight end one in drafts right now when Mark Andrews and Kelsey are clearly the number one options on their team. Maybe you can say that Mark Andrews is number two behind the run game, but Laporta is definitely number three behind his own run game and Amon Ross St. Brown. And the biggest problem is I don't see him ever being a real game breaker when Amon Ross St. Brown runs the exact same route tree as Laporta does. He's in the exact same areas of the field. So how is Laporta ever going to just go completely nuts for over 100 receptions in a season? He can't. I personally think he's being overvalued. We're drafting him at his peak compared to guys like Andrews, Kelsey, McBride, Kittle, all these guys who I don't think are at their peak. But yeah, those are my five tight ends that are going to make or break fantasy football. Well, next up is my five quarterbacks who will make or break fantasy football. That's coming out soon. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know who you think should be on this list. Drop a follow and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.